Welcome to this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade Podcast, where we look forward to shaving every day. Welcome to episode 83 of the podcast. My name is Rick DeWeese. I'll be your host this week. This week we got an email, a message. <laughs> I played an April Fool's joke. I'll tell you about some of the responses. I'll tell you about some uh, shaves of the day. Um, I've been playing around with uh, some Kells Original Soap. Uh, Arabian Spice, and uh, I'll tell you all about that. A quick segment on the right tools for the job. I want to tell you about some moccasins that I have. You may think that's just weird, but uh, I've got some moccasins that are truly outstanding, and I thought I'd tell you about them. Uh, I had a bit of a frustration when I was... Uh, it's It's been... I've I've been to the pinnacle, and I've been down at the bottom of the valley. All in the same week. It's uh, it's it's really kind of uh, interesting. Um, uh, just I'll uh, I talk a little bit about quality. I also stopped by a uh, an antique store and I tell you about an experience that I had in the uh, after the, at the end of the show there. Um, in uh, stopping by a, a place called Experimac, where I got the battery on my iPhone changed out. It has changed my iPhone dramatically. It's like I have a new phone all of a sudden. Um, it, it really is an amazing transformation. I have been just playing with my phone again like it was brand new. And all for like, you know, less than $30. It's, it's an amazing thing. And I'll tell you about that experience uh, at, the, at the end of the show. Um, it's uh, it's, well, it's kind of interesting. Anyhow, um, that's the show this week. Uh, let's get on with it. I got an email from Anthony. I've been listening to your podcast for quite some time now. I always look forward to my Thursday morning download. You're doing a great job in providing a great service to the wet shaving community. Keep up the great work. In your recent podcasts, you have been discussing the difficulty you are having with shaving under your jawline using your straight razor. I have the same trouble until... I tried something very different from what I'm used to. My routine is to shave my first pass up from neck to jaw, and the second pass is down jaw to neck. That gives me an okay shave, but the trick for me is to lower my head, pushing my chin slightly into my chest. This creates a pretty flat surface along the side of my face and neck. I then place the razor next to my ear uh, facing the blade towards my chin and proceed to shave in repeated short strokes against the grain, progressing towards my chin. This gives me a BBS shave along my jawline and along the upper part of my neck. At first, I thought I would cut myself by not having my skin pulled tight, but this has worked very well for me. I'm far from an expert, but I thought I would share it in case it might work for you. You never know. Thanks again for all your hard work. Kind regards, Anthony. Um, well, Anthony, thank you very much. I have tried that with uh, with single-edged and double-edged razors, and it has been very effective. Um, and so it's interesting. I, I guess I had not thought of doing the same thing um, with a straight razor. So thanks for the tip. I will try that probably this weekend. Um, when I have a little bit more time, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know how it turns out. But I do appreciate the email. I also got a message from uh, Stefan. He says, Hi, Rick. I was listening to your podcast last night and heard you mention not having any grip when you're using your straight razor. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos where they rub their fingertips on a loom block. See if this helps you out. Um, okay. I have tried that before, and yes, in fact, it does help. It almost feels like, well, if you've ever had a situation where your skin was exceptionally dry, um, both your fingertips and your face skin, it, it kind of feels like that. It's uh, The, the alum has an, a, a drying effect, and so it becomes very grippy, and yes, you do get a very nice uh, grip. The problem is, for me, quite honestly, is that, okay, if I have to do that to stretch my skin or to move things around to have a good shave, I'm sorry. It just becomes, well, the finicky, I guess, is, you know, to me it's almost like it, it becomes, and and I know, I'm you, 
people are probably yelling at the at the you know their their iPhones or whatever they're listening to on right now. Um, but but to me, it's it's almost not worth it. <laughs> it's just now I say that, but at the same time, um, I I have. Well, in this podcast, I'll tell you about something that I was able to achieve that, well, may make the difference to my attitude on that. But, you know, um, you know initially when I, when I read that message, it was like, yeah, yeah, I, but it's, yeah, I'm sorry. It's kind of like shims. If I've got to shim a razor, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just, it's not worth it. So, <laughs> um, listen to the rest of the podcast because uh, I'll tell you something that, well, quite honestly, might change my attitude toward, well, all of it. I don't know. So, so last week, um, I played an April Fool's joke on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I wrote a script, and I was sitting at work, and I wrote this. I wrote this script that, that said after... After a lot of soul searching and 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 everything, and and I finally come to the point in my life that that uh, you know my uh, I'm I, the podcast is just taking too much time, and and I'm just gonna quit doing new episodes, and and it it, it shouldn't bother too many people because while my numbers went up at one point, they've now diminished to the point where this probably won't make too many people mad. <laughs> and then at the end, I said. Oh, and go army. <laughs> oh, it was funny. It was good. Um, then at then at the end I said, Ha, ah, I bet I got you for a minute. And and yeah, I, I got a few people. <laughs> oh, it was fun. The reactions were uh the, the reactions were, were pretty good. Um I, I gotta admit though, the absolute best reaction that I got from it was a guy wrote me on Facebook there. Uh, um I think it was Joe, and uh, he uh, he wrote and he said, "Well, I read the first few lines and I immediately unsubscribed. Wish you well." And then he then a couple of returns later, it was like, "Yeah, I bet I got you too." <laughs> I'm like, "Dang, that was good." <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, <laughs> good Lord willing, uh, the podcast will continue because well, I kind of enjoy doing this stuff. <laughs> Oh goodness. And uh and listenership no, it's uh it's been a steady increase from the from the word go and uh thank you all very much for uh for being out there and thank you very much for uh for tolerating my uh twisted sense of humor on April first. So today was something a little bit different. I tried a different soap. I had purchased a uh, a puck of soap the other day from uh, from Maggards, and it was Kells Original, and I got the uh, the Hemp Aloe Blend, and I got it in Arabian Spice. I just I really just wanted to uh, to to check that out. Kells Original comes in a little puck. It's uh, I don't know, kind of a kind of a brownish little puck. Looks like it's glycerin based, and quite honestly, I don't have the uh, the ingredient list in in front of me. It was just it was just one of those things. It was like five bucks, and well, I wanted to try it out. Okay, so again, it appears to be a, a glycerin based soap, and uh, does a uh, you know lathering up. It was like wow, that's uh, that's good stuff. Now Arabian spice, okay. It makes you think of a lot of things, you know. For me, if I remember correctly, it was kind of like this this uh, frankincense myrrh type uh, type spice scent that in the description, and so it was intriguing. It was it was one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I like that stuff. Let me uh, let me give this a shot. So lathering it up, um, you know, the first thing that I noticed was that the uh, the the proto lather, if you will, was had a, a bit of a brown tint, and uh, however, as it lathered, uh, it just a uh, luxurious white lather. And again, I believe the soap is glycerin-based, and it reacts, or at least it seemed to react like a glycerin-based soap in that it lathered just very, very exceptionally. Okay, so Arabian Spice, the scent is just, oh, it's fabulous. It, it, it really is nice. <laughs> however... <laughs> I believe 
that uh, one of the spices that is in the uh, the Arabian spice soap is in fact cinnamon, and more than likely cinnamon oil. Um, and uh, for me, uh, that stuff uh, burns. It's uh, it's really interesting for me. It's kind of like the uh, the opposite of menthol. You know, menthol is cooling and and cinnamon oil, if that in fact is what it is, which again I believe it is, um, burns. It, it's it's hot, and uh, I, I found myself quite honestly in the same way that I am with uh, with menthols of. <laughs> of shaving just to get the stuff off my face. <laughs> yeah, so it was it was interesting. It was like, ah, I love the smell, but I don't like the reaction. It's just okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, it was a it, it it did a lovely shave. I mean, I I used uh, my old uh, my old gem featherweight because it happened to be sitting there with a carbon steel blade already propped up in it, uh, you know, dry and everything, and it was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll just, I'll just grab that. That's my, kind of my, one of my go-tos. One of my, I've got a lot of go-tos. <laughs> Anyhow, I grabbed that, and uh, it did a, uh, it did a good job, but uh, the reaction, and, and I've had a reaction like this one other time, and it was almost identical, but it was in a soap that was known to have heavy cinnamon in it and uh, cinnamon oil, more than likely. So again, I believe I'm having a uh, an issue. Now, the, the funny thing is, is that there was no redness. Uh, you know, there's there's no redness involved. So, you know, you feel the, kind of this this heat, and you, you shave it off, and, and you look, and, well, there is no redness, which, you know, you're almost mystified. It's almost uh, kind of like with menthol. You know, you expect a... Uh, well, a little frost on your face, <laughs> but uh, so it was. It was interesting. It was intriguing. Again, love the scent. It was just good stuff. Uh, so I'll I'll try this for you know a while and uh, see what comes of it. Use the uh, use my Nathan Clark uh, uh, bore brush. Or Nathan Clark bore brush. Used my Nathan Clark badger brush on it this morning and. Uh, well, it just it just did a fabulous job. It it really did. That between that and a salsa bowl, I mean, I'm I'm in good shape. So uh, love that and uh, had a good time with it. And uh, it was it was interesting. It was intriguing. So uh, there you go. The shave of the day. So one of the things that I did yesterday was I. Uh, wired up my amateur radio in my truck so that uh, so that I could transmit on high power. Now before I had put the uh, I had put my mobile rig, if you will, in my truck and I had it just kind of uh, set up so that I was running power off of the uh, off the battery or the off of the lighter socket. And uh, don't necessarily want to do that because the amateur radio that I have um, it will put out a maximum at high power of about 50 watts, which, uh, you know, 50 watts is a lot of power. And uh, it's not like, you know, a CB or something, which is putting out maybe 10 or something like that. Um, so 50 watts is a chunk of, chunk of power. And so in order to not fry the wiring going to the, uh, going to the lighter plug, um, I went ahead and powered directly to the battery. The other nice thing about that is, is that that prevents sags and dips and, you know, other problems because it just comes straight off the battery. So, uh, it was a good thing, but I ended up, uh, uh, doing a, what I thought was a very nice job. It almost looks factory. I got 12 gauge wire with fuses, both in the positive and the negative. Again, just to make sure that nothing, uh, untowards happens, um, to the radio. I'd much rather blow a fuse than uh, do any kind of damage to that radio because, uh, well, they're not cheap. And uh, so got a couple of fuses in there, got it passing through wire looms, and even found a grommet that wasn't being used so that I've got a waterproof connection into the cab of the truck. So uh, got all that taken care of and done. And, of course, you know, then when I plugged the radio in and powered it up, or at least tried to power it up, I got nothing. And I'm like, what the heck? 
And I go back and check the wiring, and of course the wiring's fine, and I got power all the way back to the plug, and uh, you know what I've got is I've got uh, what are called amp plugs, uh, AMP. Uh, so those things are supposed to be really, really nice, and, and they are for the most part, but I had one where the wire wasn't pushed in all the way. Oops. And uh, so change that, fix that, and uh, put it all back together, and sure enough, works like a champ. So now I have, uh, you know, mobile VHF and UHF radio in the truck that sounds great. A lot better reception than my old handheld. So uh, good stuff there. So part of the uh, part of the adventure was I went down to uh, my local radio shack because in trying to solder connections in 12-gauge wire, which is fairly stout wire, um, I didn't have a soldering iron that had enough, well, power. And the biggest uh, soldering iron that I had was uh, was only 25 watts. I have a little 15 watt and a 25 watt, but I didn't have anything big enough for uh, you know for the bigger wire. I needed something that put out a lot of heat, and uh, so I went down to my local Radio Shack. Now, as many of you may or may not know, um, Radio Shack is undergoing bankruptcy, and they're closing a lot of their stores. And quite honestly, after my relationship uh, over the years with Radio Shack, <laughs> I understand why. Um, they're not real good. I mean, I'm sorry. They're they're convenient when I need something and I don't want to wait around for the internet or stuff like that. But quite honestly, with a little planning, I mean, I could do without Radio Shack in a heartbeat. Um, the folks there typically don't have a clue what it is they're selling. Uh, they went into the uh, into the phone market, you know, number of years ago. There was a there was a post that uh, somebody sent me of a uh, that was written by a Radio Shack employee that just listed the abuse that those guys go through. I understand they don't pay a lot. I just you know I feel for the guys that work there, but the store, you know, the 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 company as a whole, yeah, it deserves to be bankrupt. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, but it just does. Anyhow, so I went in there, and lo and, whole, lo and behold, to my shock and surprise, there's a big banner on the uh, on the uh, storefront that says, you know, store closing, everything 10 to 15% off, or 10 to 50% off. And I'm like, holy cow. So I walk in there. I needed a soldering iron and some solder, so I, I picked that up. Those were 10% off each, so that was nice. Um, I picked up uh, an, another microphone. Um, the microphone that I've been using uh, upstairs in my studio was the uh, was a Radio Shack dynamic microphone, and they had them there. And uh, so I picked up another one, and uh, it was ten percent off. So you know, it was only about thirty five dollars. Okay, that's a pretty good deal. And so I wanted to try it uh, with my Zoom uh, recorder, um, and that's what I'm doing now. And the the main reason that I bought it is so that if I ever do interviews. Because my Zoom recorder has the ability to have two inputs, I now have the ability to have two microphones, one for me and one whoever I'm interviewing. So it's kind of nice that way, and, uh, and you know, it's uh, just a lot more convenient than either having to share one microphone or to, uh, to have the uh, little clip-on unit on top of the, the uh, digital recorder sitting in the center of the room capturing, well, everything, because those things are condensers and... Well, this is a dynamic, so uh, it's it's nice. So anyhow, I, uh, I I went in there. The other thing I picked up, which I thought was amazing, was they had a little uh, a mouse, a wireless mouse. They had some Apple products, and that thing was twenty percent off. Well, okay, so I picked it up because uh, you know I'd wanted a, a mouse for it, um, and so you know twenty percent off. That's uh, that's hard to beat. Um, so anyhow, that's that's what I did, and uh, I'm here to tell you the 60 watt uh, soldering iron on uh, 12 gauge wire. Um, yeah, that's the ticket, you know, for uh, for for big gauge wires. Uh, yeah, a couple of seconds on there, and solder flows nicely, and there's enough heat in the joint that uh, you know things work right. Yeah, I was uh, it was very nice. And it's just you know to a certain extent, it's like everything else that we do when you have the right tools. You know, whether that be the right razor, the right brush, the right soap, whatever, soft water, you know, uh, prep. When you have the right tools, the job is just so much more enjoyable. It, it, it really is. And uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And, uh, you know, whenever you're doing a job, no matter what that job is, whether it's, you know, wiring a radio on a truck or shaving, um, you should have the right tools and you should uh, go ahead and 
find the right tools and uh, not struggle because uh, it makes whatever you're doing, well, a much more enjoyable experience. Well, spring has sprung here in the upstate of South Carolina, and uh, I'm here to tell you that there is noise galore as people fire up uh, lawnmowers and leaf blowers and trimmers and just, oh my gosh, the, the, the racket is, uh, wow. <laughs> However, um, the main reason that we're here right now is, well, to tell you about the shave of the day. Okay, so the shave of the day today, I went back to the Arabian Spice, and uh, this time I lathered up with my uh, with my Nathan Clark Badger brush, and uh, I had set the 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 puck of of soap in my large lather bowl and let it dry there, and so it was stuck definitely in the middle. So. Uh, I was I was lathering and loading all at the same time, and the amount of lather was, oh my gosh, um, gracious, overflowing, huge, uh, thick, yogurt-like. It was it was really pretty wild. Um, so if you have a um, if you have a puck of soap, a small puck about the size of a Williams puck or something like that, um, it might not be a bad idea to uh, go ahead and leave it in a bowl. Uh, that you can lather on uh, constantly and consistently um, just because the, the amount of lather and the ease of lathering will just, well, it, it will amaze you. Uh, and it, it always amazes me. Um, you know, it's, it's quite honestly so much easier than loading off of, a, uh, off of a puck or out of a jar or something like that. It is just, it is phenomenally easy. I mean, the only thing that's easier than, than doing it that way is, uh, is if you use a cream. And uh, so there you go on the lather front. Um, now, the Arabian spice, you know, one of the things that it has in it is uh, cinnamon. And uh, I have at times had a bit of a reaction to cinnamon. However, it's interesting that reaction has been going down or I am much more aware of it and able to shave uh, faster. In which case, the uh, the cinnamon doesn't necessarily have time to sit around and well cause issues. Um, so that's good. Uh, the the other thing that uh, that I did today that was well a little bit different is I went ahead and shaved with my uh, gold dollar straight razor, and in doing so. I did a three-pass shave. What I did is I, I worked a little bit on my neck, but I then touched it up with, uh, with a double-edged razor um, just, well, because. I mean, it was socially acceptable. Uh, there's no doubt there. However, touching it up with a double-edged, I, uh, I was able to achieve just absolute BBS smooth. Now, here is the interesting part. When I finished up, I uh, first off there was little to no. There was just a slight warming effect due to the uh, due to the soap. So that was good. Um, I enjoyed that. I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't annoying. It wasn't. I uh, wasn't trying to get away from it. It was just. It was just a slight warming effect. So that was really good. Now the amazing thing, though was that when it was all said and done, I reached for my, my, my favorite bay rum, which happens to be Ogallala. Now, Ogallala is, uh, you know, it has a tendency, especially if you've been, well, just a tad rough, to uh, just, well, okay, I'll go ahead and say it, uh, to burn. Um, and sometimes a, a lot. Uh, again, depending on how rough you've been with your skin. All right. I have... I, I will admit I have never, never, right after a shave, had a case where I would splash Ogallala Bay Rum on and have it not, well, singe just a little bit. Ever. This time, I had no sensation at all. There was absolutely no irritation from Ogallala Bay rum. None. 
I have never achieved that before. And quite honestly, you know, one of the things that I that I put, because I, I, I immediately tweeted about it and put it up on Facebook, because I, I was excited. I mean, I'd never done this before. I had never been able to achieve an absolutely irritation-free shave with a straight razor. I have accomplished something. I have actually achieved the top of the mountain here when it comes to technique. For once in my life, I may never achieve it again, but for this one time, this one glorious time, the day before Easter, um, I was able to achieve BBS with no irritation. Holy cow. <laughs> Good stuff. If that's what straight shaving is all about, um, wow. Yeah, that's, that's like a whole new level. Uh, it's just, hmm, I don't know. So if, if, if there's some straight shavers out there, uh, let me know if that's, if, if that's what it's normally like, because, uh, holy cow. <laughs> Anyhow, the, uh, the, the, the shave of the day was, well, spectacular. So as the majority of this listening audience knows, um, one of the reasons that we are into the hobby, if you will, of wet shaving is, well, because of quality. Not only do we want a quality shave, but we, we also want to use quality products, whether that be brushes or razors or soaps, whatever, even as far as scuttles and shaving bowls. We want to surround ourselves with quality. We're willing to pay a, uh, a premium to a certain extent for that quality, especially if it is handcrafted or, you know, at least done with some love and care uh, by an individual instead of a magnificent corporation who just wants your money. Um, so there is that aspect of it. Now, a lot of us have also gone into the realm of uh, things like coffee, uh, which to a certain extent is kind of the same. We're, we're willing to pay a premium, if you will, if, uh, if the product is quality, uh, whether that product be the beans themselves, the roasters, the, the brewing method, uh, you know, the list goes on. So there's still that aspect of quality. Some of us have, have gotten into fountain pens, and uh, there's, there's a certain quality to the pen itself, the nib, the ink, um, the paper. The paper makes a huge difference. If, uh, if you have a fountain pen or if you have a decent rollerball pen, although it's really, really noticeable with a fountain pen, if you go from just everyday cheap paper to get, getting yourself some, well, very heavyweight paper, the difference is phenomenal. The, the difference is almost akin to the difference between a cartridge razor and a good uh, double-edged uh, razor or something like that. I mean, it's it's really, really noticeable. So if you're a fountain pen user, um, yeah, go get yourself some decent paper. Uh, the other thing that some of us do is we're into watches, whether they be mechanical watches or electric, although for the majority of us that are, you know, have gone that route, it's more of a, a mechanical thing. Uh, than it is uh, anything else. Now, th there's also something else to be said for quality, and that is when it comes to footwear. Now, one of the things that I have been uh, that, that I have been uh, looking for and found for uh, well a while ago, and I have been wearing just the the uh, just wearing them lovingly ever since, is I happen to enjoy just absolutely adore a decent pair. Of moccasins, and I finally got a pair, uh, a decent pair of uh, of moccasins, and they're made by Minnetonka, and they're they're triple layer moose. And I'm here to tell you, you want to talk about comfort and long lasting, durable wear. Um, I wear these things everywhere. I wear them inside. I wear them outside. I, you know, it's just they they are absolutely phenomenal. And uh, they're one of the things that really made me notice the things that I was putting on my feet. And uh, the fact that if I wear, 
you know, things that are the right size, that fit well, that uh, that are well constructed and well made. Well, I, I'm just happier. I'm just uh, I'm more comfortable. And I, you know, I'm at an age. I got to be honest. I'm at an age where I don't really care how it looks. If I'm comfortable, uh, I'm there. Uh, it's just you get to a certain point, and I don't know if it's. If it's, you know, whether you're married or not, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the key is. Um, but you get to a point where, you know, okay, style is nice. Style is one thing. You know, I'll wear clothes that uh, hopefully look somewhat uh, maybe not appealing, but at least don't uh, don't turn people off. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I want to be comfortable. And uh, these moccasins, quite honestly, are one of the things that allow me to be comfortable, uh, you know, when I'm here at the house. And uh, it, they are a great, great thing to have. If you've never tried a decent pair of moccasins, they're, they're actually good for your feet, too, because, uh, you know, walking that close to the earth without anything in the way, like a hard sole or, you know, something that that is relatively rigid. I mean, even... Um, even a uh, you know a light pair of sandals has a thicker piece of leather than uh, than these moccasins. There, I mean, you can feel you know things under your feet that you would normally not feel, and it just gives you a little bit more of a grounding. It's not quite you know it's not as close as going barefoot, but um, it does give you some uh, some cushion and a little bit of protection, which is nice, especially here in the summertime in the heat. You know, if you're walking around on concrete, uh, it can get hot, but. Uh, you know, a decent pair of moccasins uh, are are really really nice. And like I said, these pair by by Minnetonka, they they've got a couple of different uh, kinds. And I've got just the classic low cuts, but they're uh, like I said, they're they're triple moose, and they're uh, they're great. They they are wearing just phenomenally well. I was very surprised when. Uh, when, you know, after having them for a good long time now, I looked at the soles and realized that they weren't really wearing that much. It's just, it's really amazing. You know, it's kind of like when you when you pick up a, an old vintage Gillette and you look at it and you realize that it really hasn't worn at all. It's just, you know, it's it's there because it was, it was well built, it was quality, and uh, yeah, yeah. So that's the same thing I'm experiencing with these uh, with these moccasins. So I, I figured I'd tell you about it. Um, I I have some other uh, segments and episodes that I want to do about uh, about footwear, and I figured I'd kick it off with my moccasins. So I need to tell you about my not shave of the day, but shave of the night. Okay, so. Uh, the last couple of nights, I have been shaving at night, and uh, mainly because being, you know, the the Easter weekend, and everybody wanting to get up and look their best, you know, and, and all this, going to church, um, it, it's one of those things where I just, I really didn't want to have to deal with, you know, people rushing and bouncing and using up all the hot water. It's just, you know, everybody running around. I'm sorry. It's just not a relaxing environment. On the other hand, um, when, for the most part, everybody's kind of quieted down for the night and, you know, uh, not doing too much, uh, it is a much more relaxing environment. So, uh, the other night I was shaving and I used the uh, the Nell's original, uh, uh, you know, Arabian Spice Soap, and uh, probably for the last time, uh, and I proceeded to shave and uh, with my gold dollar straight razor. And I thought, okay, now the other day I had reached the pinnacle and had absolutely no irritation with that combination. You know, the razor was perfect, the, the, the soap was good, I mean, you know, everything just lined up. Well, not so today. Apparently, you know, I had uh, I had not uh, done my uh, I don't know tribute to the razor gods or something. I, I don't know what it was, um, but uh, it, it it was not to be. And so I ended up with a straight razor shave that, quite honestly, and I really, to for the life of me, I don't quite understand what it was that I did differently. And that's the frustration of it. You know, if you if you can pinpoint something, if you can say, look, that's where I've got an issue. It's the technique. It's the angle. It's the pressure. It, it's something. 
you know, but I just can't. <laughs> and that's the frustration of it. It's like it's like searching for the needle in the haystack, not even understanding what a needle is or what a haystack is, for that matter. <laughs> and so uh, it's just one of those things. Anyhow, I ended up with a shave that was, uh, well, rather irritating. Um, you know, it just... It, it things just didn't line up. Now it's it's not the fault of the soap, and it's not the fault I don't believe of the razor. You know, it may have been my stropping technique or something. I don't know. But uh, anyhow, it, it just it just didn't work out. And uh, so, you know, I I understand completely the frustration. You know, especially when you watch YouTube videos and and the guys make it look well so easy. It's not. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just not. <laughs> At least not for us normal mortals, if you will. It's, uh, it is a learning process. It is a learning curve. It is, you know, something to be attained over periods of time. Uh, it's not something that uh, that that just comes to you overnight. You know, it's not like you can pick up a straight razor, have an excellent shave, and go, oh, yes, perfect, I'm good, and have excellent shaves with a straight razor from then on out. It just doesn't work that way. I wish it did, uh, but for me, anyhow, it does not. Um, so I will uh, consider myself a mere mortal and, uh, you know, maybe uh, not worthy of the of the kudos that uh, that, that go to those folks who, who use straight razors uh, on a daily basis and appear to have absolutely no irritation, razor burn, or anything else. Either that or else they have very strong constitutions where they rip half their faces off and uh, throw aftershave on it and uh, don't even flinch. <laughs> Which, of course, could be the case. But uh, anyhow, I, I fully understand. And in fact, it was that way for me uh, to a certain extent. Um even with the double-edged razors initially, due to the fact that I had been used to uh, putting pressure on cartridge razors uh, for years. And so to move into a double-edged or a single-edged razor uh, from a cartridge razor and, you know, applying excess pressure and, you know, getting the, rec you know, the, the associated irritation, um, I understand that completely. So, in fact, the the wet shaving uh, game, if you will, is one of learning and of balance so that uh, everything comes together to, well, do what I did the other day, which is, you know, reach, uh, you know, one of those rare pinnacle shaves. Um, so for all you guys starting out, um, don't fret. It's normal. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's not that you'll never get it. It's not that, you know, you don't know what you're doing or you've just got something wrong. No, you'll you'll get it eventually. You'll figure it out eventually. It just it takes time. And uh luckily the the, the skin on your face heals quickly. <laughs> uh and uh well, like they said in the movie one time, chicks dig scars. <laughs> uh so anyhow, that's uh, that's kind of my report of the shave of the night, or I don't know, maybe it would have been better if I hadn't shaved and just used sandpaper. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, oh well. Anyhow, for, uh, for all you guys starting out, keep it up. Uh, keep trying at it. Be patient with yourselves more than anything else. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, yeah, it is shaving, but we're also trying to enjoy ourselves as well. So, uh, you know, don't get frustrated to the point where you don't enjoy it. Um, you know, that's that's counterproductive. It would be much better if uh, if you went a little slower and uh, enjoyed it, even if you, uh, you know, just went with some of the soft stuff. And, you know, like I've said in the past, if the transition to uh, wet shaving is uh, is difficult or problematic, um, you know, perhaps uh, you know lessen that transition a little bit, and uh, actually learn how to make lathers with a uh, with a brush and soap using a cartridge razor. Uh, there's you know there, that that's a that's a fine transition. That's a very suitable transition. 
and it allows you to learn some things and get yourself prepared so that uh, you know you're not doing everything all at the same time. Uh, so anyhow, that's my uh, that was my shave of the night and a few uh, well I don't know maybe suggestions for uh, for folks just starting out. Well, seeing as how it was a beautiful day today, I went and did some more uh, automobile repair uh, on the on my son's Mustang, the uh, the cowl uh, that is in between the windshield and the hood had uh, well it was old and busted up and everything, so uh, we went ahead and replaced that. Uh, had a few issues with it, had to do a little trimming and you know that kind of stuff, but all in all, eh, it went okay. Um, you know, it's interesting, when you buy replacement parts, uh, everything is just so cheap. <laughs> so clipped together, so, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's not sturdy, it's, it's, you know, you basically have one shot if you've never done it before and you don't know what you're doing, it's like it's prone to breakage, it's just, it's just generally a pain in the, well, just a pain in the behind, really. It's just, it's incredible. It's, it really makes you wonder. I mean, you know, here we are jumping up and down on the table about stupid stuff, about names and, you know, what we call each other and how we interact. But yet as a society, we can't make anything that's worth anything. Now, everybody says, well, it's because we're not willing to pay. I would dare say that we would be willing to pay. And in fact, I can, I can point to instances within the shaving community where Yes, we are in fact willing to pay. We're, we're in fact willing to pay fairly high prices for uh, for double-edged and single-edged razors of good quality versus plastic contraptions that uh, that you end up throwing out after a short period of time. So, you know, to sit there and say, well, you know, the American public is not willing to pay is well, bullpucky. It really is. It's uh, it's not truthful at all. So. Then it it you know you you kind of delve a little bit deeper into it and realize that well it's it's marketing and and we have basically succumbed to the throwaway philosophy of the market where it doesn't matter what it is everything is throwaway. And it's like you know my gosh people it gets to a point where it's just ridiculous. You know, I mean, if if you buy something and use it once and it's gone and broken and and you end up throwing it away. What the heck was the point? You might as well not even. It, it's like the other day I was watching a I was watching a, a, a Wrangler Star video, and one of the things that he's been doing is uh, building a treehouse. And uh, he had a bolt. It was a it was a galvanized lag screw, is what it is, not a bolt, but a galvanized lag screw. And the head twisted off the dang thing. I'm sorry, um, that's not quality. Uh, you know the the time and effort that he spent, uh, you know, getting that thing out, he would have probably gladly dub paid double what the the cost that he paid for that silly thing, if he had assurance that yes, indeed, it wasn't going to fall apart in his in his fingers, fall apart in his hands, and have him spend an extra half an hour or fifteen minutes or however long it was, getting the tools and figuring out how to uh, you know get everything apart so he could start over again. I mean, it becomes a point where it's ridiculous, you know. I mean, in industry, they they build things in such a way that you assemble it once. You don't make mistakes. You do it right, you do it once. Um, that's, the, that's the philosophy, because that way you have the least amount of effort into it. Well, the same is true out here. The same is true out in, uh, you know, in the, in the world of civilian uh, stuff. You know, we don't want to have to do things twice. We don't have to have to take things apart and put them back together. We don't have to have to deal with a, a lag screw where the head pops off and you got to take it out with a pair of vice grips. We really don't want to deal with that. Our time is valuable. You know, and if your time is so valuable that you've hired somebody to do the job, whoever you hired to do the job, well, their time is valuable too. They're trying to make a profit. They don't want to have to do the stuff over again. They don't want to have to deal with broken things. So how is it that we have gotten to this point in our society where having things that are, well, for 
lack of better words, pieces of garbage, and and not not worthy of really being even called what what it is they're supposed to be. You know, when it gets to a point where a, you can't even trust a, a bolt to be a bolt or a screw to be a screw, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a bit of a problem. And that problem is a societal problem because as a society, we have accepted that premise. We no longer, you know, seek out and buy quality. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, okay... Like Wrangler Star was saying the other day in his in his uh, video, you know, it's what they had. Well, it may be what they had, but it's probably not all that's available. You're just not looking in the right places. For example, do you have the capability of of finding a, a company called Fastenal that makes bolts and and screws and things for industry? Now they charge a little bit more. The quality is also a little bit higher. I guarantee it's not the same quality as what you get at Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, or, you know, wherever. It's one of those things where, you know, we got to do better, people. I mean, as a society, we've got to we've got to put our foot down and say, look, dang it, this, enough's enough. This is nuts. This is really nuts. So, you know, I put in a cowl. What, you know, what got me started on this? Well, I put in a cowl the other day. Uh, on the uh, or, or today on the uh, Sun's Mustang, and there's rubber weather stripping on the cowl. Well, the glue adhesive, while the glue adhesive, you know, stuck well, it was it had a foam strip. It was like foam, and then two, you know, that's how they put it together. It was glue and foam um, that was holding the weather stripping on. Well, the weather stri- the, the the foam had basically torn. And so the weather stripping was falling off. Now, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, wait a minute, time out. We've got weather stripping, and and it's it's literally falling off the piece. I mean, that's just shoddy. There's no quality there. That's just that's garbage. That's trash. And on top of that, it's it's weather stripping. You know, rubber weather stripping that's falling off a piece of plastic. Okay, so now it's I don't know, kind of. Looks to me like double double trash, <laughs> uh, but it's it's just it's maddening. It really is, and it's all over the place. It's everywhere. I mean, you buy a car nowadays, and and half of the car is plastic. You know, back in the old days, you know, granted, okay, I will admit that the that the plastic cars are supposed to be uh, or purported to be anyhow a little bit safer. Um, and I will guarantee that, you know, back in the 60s, you know, if you hit your head on the dash of a of a 69 pickup truck that was had all steel dash and everything, um, you were in for a rough ride. <laughs> it probably hurt a lot. OK, um, but at the same time, it you know, you can buy one now and a quick sanding and a shot of primer and some paint and boom it's back up just like normal and no degradation no nothing it's just it's just you know it's going to last forever i don't know about you i'd be willing to pay for that you know like i said you know you look at the the mongoose razor or the the cobra or you know some of the uh double edged offerings we're willing to pay the cost of quality tools, of quality craftsmanship. How come that doesn't exist in everything in our lives? Well, hopefully on my adventure down to Atlanta as I'm uh, going back here, it's going to take me about two hours to get back home. And uh, that'll get me home at about four right now. Uh, so I may go, and there is an antique shop that uh, actually... Uh, a sign that purported four antique shops on uh, exit 129 on the way back home. And I may stop in there and just peruse. Because you never know. They might have axes or knives or <gasps> razors. <laughs> so we'll see what they have. It, it, uh, it will be interesting. You know, it may be one of these things where it's just a bunch of, you know, some antique stores are really good, and unfortunately, they are typically the ones that are holes in the wall uh, that don't advertise a whole lot, you know. And it may be that one antique store is, you know, the the hip and modern antique store, and the other one is the uh, 
the hole in the wall with everything shoved in the corner kind of place where you can usually find good stuff. So we'll see. And then we'll also see if it's one of these places because, you know, there have been times that I've walked into antique stores and uh, apparently the uh, person who was running it was also spending their time on eBay uh, looking at what the, you know, prices, the going prices of things were and uh, adjust the the prices to fit the market accordingly. Always up, never down. You know, kind of like gasoline. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it is interesting. I understand these people have to make a living. I, I do get that, but, uh, you know, it's... <sighs> It's one of those things that even had a, had a comment on it on Facebook uh, this last week. You know, people being absolutely amazed at the prices of, uh, of razors on, uh, on Facebook. You know, a, a, a flare tip, for example, going for 30 bucks when, you know, not too long ago, those things were $15 all day long. It's, uh, and it is amazing. It's, it's a, a testament to either the well, insanity of our uh, wet shaving crowd or the popularity of it. I, I tend and I hope <laughs> that it's the popularity of it instead of, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of crazy guys. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the report from, uh, from the road as we uh, travel down it. All right, so on the way back from Atlanta, I stopped in the uh, big metropolis of Brasselton, uh, Georgia. <laughs> stopped at an antique shop there, a couple of them actually, and uh, well, I had a good time. I mean, walked around and everything. However, <laughs> holy crap, <laughs> it has come to my attention that, uh, like I said, apparently people are uh, looking at eBay and seeing what these things go for. Um, you know, a, a Schick uh, injector for $35? What? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, just crazy prices. It's, uh, I don't get me wrong. I hope they get every penny of it. Um, because in a lot of cases, that stuff's worth it. But, uh, with the collection that I have, nah, no. Uh, not to me. It may be worth it to somebody else, and that's just fine. But uh, anyhow, good stuff. Uh, got to wander around and see what uh, see what passed for an antique shop in uh, in Brasselton, Georgia. Well, that concludes this episode of the Brush and Soap and Blade podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you have some suggestions or would like a topic covered, drop me an email at brushandsoapandblade at gmail.com or give me a call at 864-372-6234 or contact us on Twitter at Brush and Blade. You can also visit us at our blog, brushandsoapandblade.wordpress.com. As always, we're available on iTunes and Stitcher. So today is Monday, and uh, it's a nice day. It's supposed to rain, though, and unfortunately, it's supposed to rain, like, all week long, which is going to be a drag, because, uh, you know, last week it rained, well, like, all week long. So that's like two weeks in a row. What the hey? Anyhow, it was absolutely gorgeous for the Easter weekend, and uh, sometimes, well, that's all you really want, anyhow. So uh, that's a good thing. So uh, I, I decided that uh, the other day that I needed to take a day off, and so I decided I would take Monday off because, uh, you know, a lot of things go on on Monday, and, you know, with the Easter weekend and stuff, you're just not going to get a lot done. But uh, Monday comes around, and lo and behold, well, you can do things. So today, uh, one of the things that I am doing is I am going down, and hopefully, if all works well, I will be getting the battery replaced in my iPhone 5S. Now, the thing that's interesting about that is that I really, really like the phone. It's a good phone. It's It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of features that I like. I mean, I like the fact that, well, it fits in my hand. I like the fact that it fits in my pocket. I like the fact that it's not too thin. If I look at the new phones, um, the, the new iPhones, yeah, they're nice and all. They're thin. Um, and they're also just, well, the, the, 
the six is just a little bit taller. It actually sticks out of my shirt pocket a good bit. And the, the, the six plus, I mean, there's only certain shirts that I could even fit in it. Um, now, just to give you an idea, I have been carrying around some kind of pocket device for 20 years, uh, more than likely. I mean, it started way back when I had uh, something. It was a it was a little personal digital assistant called a Da Vinci, and uh, it's probably showing my age, but you know that was that was way long time ago. So I, I had the Da Vinci, and it worked well, and I carried it in my pocket. And then I uh, I moved and 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 kind of upgraded, and I had a Palm for a while, and. And in fact, I had a tungsten, a palm tungsten that I carried around in my pocket. Everything I carried, I carried in my pocket, my shirt pocket. So it just, it's like normal. There's supposed to be something in my shirt pocket. Now, the the, the, the phones, you know, I'd, I've had flip phones, I've had, you know, smartphones, blah, blah, blah. They all, well, wouldn't fit in my pocket. It just, they didn't have the right form factor. Until the 5S came along, um, and that was the one that I got. Uh, prior to that, I had I don't know some LG something or other. It was like a flip phone or a slide phone or something, but it just it just wasn't the right form factor. So the uh, the uh, the the iPhone was well like perfect. It fit in the pocket. It was the perfect form factor. It, it had well everything. It was a computer in your pocket. It had. All the functionality of the uh, of the palm, of the palm the the palm tungsten that I had it had you know word processors it had well it just had everything and I have thoroughly enjoyed it and then when I you know use it for things like podcasting you know because I've got the apps on it and Google Maps and I mean it's just a phenomenal device really really like it. Um, and then, of course, you know, the fact that uh, it works just fine until, well, the battery runs out. And again, that, that, that kind of goes to the whole quality thing. You know, I mean, I, I am okay with having a battery that requires some, I don't know, some manipulation and maneuvering to, uh, to remove and to change. I, I'm okay with that, you know. I'm okay with small form factor batteries. I'm okay with that too. But it really, I mean, when you have to go to the level of popping a fitted screen out of an aluminum shell just to get to the battery, I'm sorry, that that is starting to get to the point where it's not just not user friendly. Anyhow, the other day I was uh I was surfing a Facebook, just trying to catch up and to see uh, which end was up, and uh, lo and behold, I came across a post about a company down in Atlanta called Experimac. Now, Experimac is an interesting company. It is essentially a company designed for working on and refurbishing, well, Apple products. Phones, laptops, you know, the, the iMacs, the, everything. And that's what they do. And then they, you know, they'll take them and they'll sell them and, you know, all that. And it's just, well, it's just really kind of a, an interesting concept. Per personally, I think it's a great concept. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, I can go down there today and uh, have them replace the, uh, the battery in my phone and uh, have it be, uh, well, an, uh, an enjoyable experience. It's something to do today. It takes me about two hours to get down there and two hours to get back. So it's a four-hour road trip. But in addition to that, there's a little caveat here. In addition to that, on the way, either coming or going, I get to stop at Ham Radio Outlet down in Atlanta and, uh, well, peruse the ham gear, which I haven't done in ages. And uh, so that's uh, that's something that I'm really looking forward to and... Uh, who knows, maybe I'll even stop in Tacoa and do a little antique shopping or something. But uh, that's kind of what's on the, uh, on the game plan for today. And so uh, I will let you know uh, soon, uh, next, uh, 
next time, uh, you know, I'll, I'll link them together. So for you, the listening audience, it will seem, well, seamless that, that I just, I'll stop here and next thing you know, I'll be talking about my experience at Experimac. <laughs> ah, the wonders of audio editing. Okay, so I walk into the store and uh, the first person I meet is Neil, who is the owner of the store. And uh, we chat a little bit, and I tell him how I found him and all of this. And, uh, well, just pretty much uh, shoot the breeze and have a good time. Um, I then tell him that I need the uh, battery replaced in my iPhone. And in the process of uh, doing that, the, uh, they took the, the phone and verified everything on it, verified the uh, serial numbers and size and all this, and uh, ended up... Uh, putting everything, or, you know, ch checking everything all out, and everything worked fine when I gave them the phone. So, uh, off you go, off to the races, and uh, here, here's the phone, go uh, go fix it. And uh, so, they, they took the phone, and they proceeded to replace the battery. Um, they came out after, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and said, okay, the battery, we replaced the battery and the new battery is in. We're in the process of charging it up because uh, the battery was, uh, was you know, didn't have a charge on it. I said, fine, no big deal. And uh, they came out later and lo and behold, the, uh, the battery had charged. And uh, so far I'm thinking, yeah, this is good. So... Uh, I'm standing out there just kind of checking out the other uh, the other things that they have, the uh, the Macs and the Towers and the iMacs and laptops and all the other stuff. And, uh, you know, they have a power supply that I that I happen to uh, need for uh, for my MacBook at a good price. So I tell them I'll go ahead and get one of those, too. And uh, then they come out and say, well, we're having a problem with your phone. OK, the uh, the button isn't working. It's like, oh. Okay, he said, "Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll replace that. No big deal." It's like, "Okay, uh, that's that's fine," and uh, they proceed to uh, you know proceed to replace the button. And then I come back, and uh, they have they tell me that they have they're they're, they're a tad befuddled, and uh, you know I might want to go get a, a cup of coffee. In other words, they are politely saying, um, "Go away," because you're you're making them nervous. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just standing around. I'm not uh, not saying anything to anybody. And every time they tell me something, it's like, oh, okay, no big deal. You know, stuff happens. It's not a big deal. It's, uh, you know, it's the way things are. It's cool. Um, so anyhow, they, uh, they asked me to go get lunch politely, which is fine. And uh, I proceeded to uh, run over to the ham radio store that uh, was the other reason that I came to Atlanta. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, you know, looked around there, and I I don't know. It's been uh, a couple hours now, and so uh, I'm gonna go back and check on my phone, and uh, hopefully they have some uh, some good news to tell me because uh, being without my phone, you know, I, I started out this endeavor with a phone that would last about half a day before it needed to be charged up, and uh, well, actually not quite. It'd last probably about two hours. And, uh, you know, walking away with a phone that does less than that would be disappointing at best. Um, so, anyhow, that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. So I'm headed back to the store to, uh, to see what they have been able to accomplish. They, the interesting thing is they said, yeah, we've replaced the screen, we've replaced the button, we've replaced the battery. And I'm thinking, holy crap, you know, that's, uh, there's not that much stuff in there. What else did you do? <laughs> Um, hmm, you know, it it makes me dubious at best, but we'll see how it turns out. You know, I, I, I have my hopes up, uh, you know, I have my hopes up. It's a nice store. Um, they seem to have, uh, you know, very nice, clean store, seems to be wonderful service and, uh, you know, doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Uh, it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm different, but, uh, there you go. And, uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So we are back from Experimac and, uh, the phone is back up and working. It is, uh, 
they did not give me a replacement phone or anything like that. It is my phone, and it is, in fact, working up and running just the way it's supposed to with a new battery in it. It turned out, it was funny, because when I got in there, they said, you know, you just, right after you left is when we found it, which is a common way of saying, you know, I, I've been a troubleshooter before. <laughs> I know how this works. <laughs> Sometime after you left. <laughs> uh no, nah, I understand. It turned out there was a pin in the uh, in the connection for the uh, for the push button, the main push button on the phone, that uh, that wasn't lining up, that wasn't uh, fitting right. And so once they straightened that out, uh, they got it, and all was good. Okay, I understand that. Uh, you know, those kind of things happen, especially when you look at the uh, the absolute marvel of electrical connection engineering that well is in a modern day phone. Uh, you're, you're basically talking about something that is, uh, you know, you need a jeweler's loop to see. It's uh, it's not obvious. So, you know, <laughs> and it's 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 also the, uh, you know, the story of a troubleshooter is that it's always the small things that just absolutely kick your butt. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, they got it fixed. They apologized for my weight, and it was like, eh, no big deal. You know, I, uh, I, I went out to the uh, ham radio store and had a good time. <laughs> Uh, messed around with those guys for an hour. Um, so uh, no big deal. So all in all, um, you know, very satisfactory experience. I mean, considering what it is that they do, uh, it really is kind of a marvel when you think about it. Uh, in a lot of cases, the uh, the phones and things that we have, especially for uh, Apple products, they're not, I, let's be honest, an Apple phone, whether it's an iPhone, especially some of the new ones, they are not designed to be repaired. <laughs> They're just not. And so uh, the, the same, to a certain extent, can be said of the computers and everything else. You know, they take specialized stuff and, uh, you know, Apple uh, ties down basically what goes into their computers and uh, everything very tightly. And uh, that's one of the reasons that they, uh, that they function well and people enjoy them is because they are controlled so tightly. And so the idea of, uh, of going and, uh, you know, repairing them and making them viable alternatives once again, you know, they've got laptops in there that are, you know, six, seven years old. Uh, you know, it's, uh, and, and they're still very functional. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for a laptop, an Apple product that, that does a lot of neat things, um, you know, and you're you're not going to take it to the uh, to the utmost. Uh, it's definitely a good alternative. I mean, be quite honest. It was uh, rather uh, interesting and just a tad exciting walking around the store and looking at all the odds and ends and things that are there. And you know, yeah. So good stuff. All in all, very satisfactory uh, event. Um, we'll see how the uh, the battery is uh, is being charged as we drive back home in the truck. And uh, we'll see how, uh, how it does uh, in the coming days and see, uh, see just what kind of life I have out of it. And I'll give you a report back. Uh, hopefully I'll get it in on, on uh, this week's show. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah. So uh, right now I'm, uh, I am not displeased. Um, I would have... It would have been an absolute seamless operation, be quite honest, if I had left the phone there, walked away, and done some shopping. Um, it, it, it literally would have been seamless. I would have left the phone, I would have walked back in, and I would have had a, uh, a repaired phone, um, which is exactly what they purport to do. And in fact, the only reason that I knew what was going on is because I was standing there and they came out and told me, which is a level of honesty that is to be commended in today's industries and in today's businesses. Um, so all in all, good stuff. <laughs>